This is the easiest way to mod using the Nexus and Vortex 2. So uh, pretty much what you need to do is go onto Google and type in Nexus Vortex to get the actual Nexus Vortex manager. So a lot of people like using the mod organizer too, but this is probably my favorite. It's just easy to use. I've not actually used mod organizer, but this is just an easy one to get a hold of and probably the simplest to use for you guys. So just download the latest version here. The best way to do is just download it and make sure you download it to your desktop, then straight after downloading it, run the uh, application and then it'll load Vortex straight away. But before showing that, I'm gonna just show you some mods that you can download and probably the best ways to download them and probably mods you shouldn't really download because they are quite outdated, but you'll have a good example of that in this video. So anyways, so uh, this is the Vortex site or the Nexus website with the Vortex manager on it. So you could actually go on the file page here and this is where you can actually download the file off the actual like Google. So if you see here, this is where you can actually just get the mod manager. So if you go onto the files as well, it'll basically just say manual download. So that is pretty much what I just did at the start there. And then uh, also you need to click the requirements. So you need to do this for every single mod you download on Nexus because if you download mods without checking the requirements, you will end up having mods that just won't work or they just will they just be completely broken so you need to make sure you check the requirements and read what requirements uh each mod has so it's a good like starting tutorial on how to do that so anyway we're going to go to the nexus website so uh once you're on the nexus website it comes up with a whole list of games so you can see in the middle here there's loads of games to choose from so any game you want to have a look at see if it's got mods for you can check it Bethesda games, the majority of them have mods, so but we're going to make sure we click Skyrim Special Edition because you have the old rim, which is old Skyrim, which is like the 360 one, and then you have the new Special Edition one, which is like the Special Edition Anniversary. We're going to click that one, and then it'll take you straight to the actual mod page for all the mods for Skyrim. Make sure you have an actual account as well, so you need to make sure you make an Nexus account, otherwise you won't be able to download the mods. So it's fairly simple, just make an Nexus account and it's free, completely free. Or you can get the premium version, which just makes your downloads quicker. So you can click these tabs here and it just takes you to multiple pages. Or you can click here, which you can go to unique downloads, which I prefer to do, because it will be each individual download for each user, instead of just how many users have downloaded it, meaning... I could keep clicking download on the same mod and it'll just bump up the downloads. But if you have unique download people, that means it'll just be each download off that account. This is the mod organizer too, which I was on about earlier. I mean, I can make a video on how to do that, but I just prefer Vortex at the moment. So we're going to have a good example here. So this is a quality world map, so it is a good looking mod. But when you go to the files here, so this is how you would download it. It says mod manager. Click the requirements. There is no requirements for this mod. So it, at the bottom here, this is the requirements for all the mods that need this mod. But then what I like to do really is go to the posts. And then when you go on the posts, people will be posting about if this mod works correctly or if it's outdated, don't use it or break the game and stuff like that. And when I went to the post on this one, a lot of people said they had problems uninstalling it because the map disappeared or while using it, the map was disappeared. But if you have a look here, the last update was 2016. So that's a very good example of when you're looking at mods, you need to check when the last update was. It does have a hell of a lot of downloads and views, but that doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. So uh, while you're on the actual website, you can click here and have different options you can choose to uh, from all the different types of mods. So you literally have everything, uh, quests, armor, weapons, all that kind of thing. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go on the actual armor mods because they're just the simplest to download at first. You can also type in the name of what you want. So we're going to click Armor just on this little drop down box and then click Unique Downloads. So in this drop down box, it just has options for every kind of mod you can get on the Nexus. So that's if you want to single out a mod specifically, pretty much. So now that we've uh, searched for this, this is all the Armor mods on Skyrim's Nexus. So we're going to have a little look which one we like. So we like this one here. So this is a uh, like a hunter outfit for the Elven Armor, well, an Elven character. And one thing as well, it says UMP, so you might be you might be thinking what UMP is. UMP is pretty much a body slide you can get. So I don't have UMP, I have CBBE. So we're going to show you how to do that. But that's a bit more complicated, but it's not that much more complicated. It's fairly simple. So if you go here, it'll tell you CBBE, which is what I have for a body slide. So what we'll do is we'll download this one, and then we'll download the CBBE one. So then it works for the uh, bodies I have for the females which I can show in another video, but it's just fairly simple. So once you click download on this, this will download the Druid Armor. 
So if you click the Mod Manager download, it will just download it and Mod Manager will pretty much sort all of that out for you. So you'd have to go in the files and do it yourself. Then when you're on Vortex, this will be the main screen. So if you click Games and then make sure you type Skyrim. So, I completely messed it up there, but once you type Skyrim, not this one, not the VR one, but Skyrim Special Edition, which the majority of you guys will be using. Then once you click Mods, this will show all your mods that you've downloaded. So obviously you won't have these mods, these are just the mods I have. So once you've downloaded that mod I've shown you, it'll pop up in here and it'll automatically do it all pretty much itself. So if you go on here, it shows you the other options for the mods which you can download. But all, always check the requirements of the mod. So this doesn't have any, but some mods will. So it will say you need to download so and so as well as this mod, otherwise it won't work. So you need to make sure you always download the requirements for each mod. So we're going to go on the uh, CBB body slide mod, which will pretty much just get the female body type I have for my female characters and uh, female NPCs. So we go into files, then we go to the mod manager download again. Once we click that, it'll say Druid Armor, which is which we already have downloaded, and then slow download. So the Druid Armor was a requirement for this one because you need the original Druid Armor to work with the CBBE one because of the textures. So now that's downloaded, we have both of them here. So you can go to the download section and it'll pretty much just show you the download speed, which is, I think it's only like a gig a, sec a gig a second or something because you haven't had premium. But then if you go here and click the dependencies, so that pretty much when you download certain mods, it'll have a little bolt next to it, which will be in red. So I'll show it a good example. So once we click the actual green bolt, it will come up with this. So this is kind of complicated and you might get a bit intimidated. But pretty much, uh, it asks you to overwrite files on other files if they're kind of not compatible. So the best way to do it is when you click the little drop down box next to a file, usually click the suggested one, which uh, Vortex suggests for you, which I pretty much do. Or you can pretty much just do your own thing. So if you wanted snazzy interiors to overwrite the uh, 2K parallax one, you can do, which, we will, which you will click after. And then if you didn't want it to overwrite, you can do before. So if there's a red bolt, as soon as you download a mod, you need to make sure you sort it out. The bell icon here will actually pretty much tell you when there's a, an error pretty much so you'll have to make sure you check that and then you can actually run the mods properly without anything breaking the plugins here you actually get a, and with some mods you get plugins so if you go on here it says how many active and light you have i think it's 251 you can have as a uh, active one and then light you can have like 400 uh, 4046 so i think the actual cap is like 251 and uh very big mods will pretty much tell you in the description of the mod on Nexus if it's going to be an active one or a light one pretty much. And then the dashboard, uh, Skyrim Script Extender and 4 News Idols. So when you uh, download these two mods, they will come up on the tools. So you need to make sure you enable the uh, toolbar. Then at the top corner, they will pop up. So what you need to do with the Script Extender is it's a mod you can download off the Nexus. So once you've installed it, it will pop up at the top corner where you can see it on the top right of the screen. So every time you run Skyrim, you need to make sure you run it free Vortex and click the Skyrim script extender so certain mods work correctly. So it's just this button at the top here. So if it's not there, you just go to the tools section down here and click it as well. So that's on the dashboard. So just make sure you always click the script extender button to run Skyrim instead of running it through Steam or off the desktop. That's what I've heard and that's what you should me you meant to do anyway so it works correctly. So anyway, the last thing you want to make sure you do is deploy the mods every time you download them so the uh, mod manager will do this anyway but if you deploy mods then you know they've been deployed to your game and they're ready to go because sometimes i know on fallout new vegas you have to go on the archives and pretty much deploy them every single time you download a mod so with this one with skyrim anyway it kind of does it itself but just to double check you need to click deploy mods every time just to make sure they work so this is skyrim script extender so everyone needs to download this for a majority of mods, so that, uh, some of them actually work. So, people say you uh, you can't download this on the actual website, and you've got to go to a different website, like a third party one. But you can actually download this off the website, and I've been using it for well over a year now. So, if you just click the mod manager download, it'll do it itself. So, it's like a different application. So, once you download it, just run it through Vortex, and then it'll work. So, anyways, we're going to go on Skyrim, and we're going to see if that mod we've uh, selected will work. So, we're just going to load up one of our characters. We're going to see if it actually works correctly and we've done everything in the right way. So, uh, simple item spawner is a mod which you can get armor pieces. So, we're going to use that mod. I'll put the uh, little title on text pretty much saying 
where to get this mod from and I'll put it in the description. So with simple item spawn and loaded, we're going to find the mod we wanted. So Druid Armour, so we know it's downloaded correctly. And here we go. So yeah, everything seems to be working. So we're going to click on them and uh, equip to each armor piece and see if to make sure if all the textures and everything else is loaded incorrectly. So it's simple as that pretty much. So we're going to have a look in our inventory. And then there's the armor pieces again. So they've loaded up. So we're going to equip them all. And then equip the armor pieces and the arrows to make sure it's all in working order. And then we'll back out of this. And yeah, it's working. So that's how you download the mods. So it's fairly simple. Armor mods are fairly easy to download compared to like your texture packs. But the texture packs are pretty much exactly the same as download on armor pieces so there won't be as many problems as downloading them as you would an armor piece so it's just as simple as that guys so i hope you enjoyed if you need any help with anything else i will uh, reply to your comments down below but uh yeah like i said texture packs and all the other mods just make sure you you meet the requirements otherwise sometimes they won't work so make sure you click that requirements button and just to see that they all work and make sure you don't go willy-nilly downloading every mod because some of them are outdated so if you have by downloading an outdated mod, they just won't work. Adios.